Well, I at first I didn't know anything, so everything I kind of see it just is a, a tweet that pops up, and it just constantly seems to be getting worse. So it started off, it's just like, oh, you know, you, you've kind of uh, race swapped a, a samurai, and then they use it. Oh, he was a real person. It's like I, I highly doubt that. Actually, that just doesn't see from a logical perspective that doesn't seem accurate like no it is look and they kept referring to something it's like oh whatever I, I, don't, I don't care enough about assassin's creed to have really got into it and then over time i've seen that everything has come down to like one guy who wrote one book um and he he, he has some like university he's like a professor or something at a university and it turns out i read recently that he's been editing wikipedia for like years all to try and point back to his book and cite his book as the source of this information when he's the only source Insane. of this information. So he basically Insane. decided this guy existed. And then only because of a Ubisoft game that was based on it has his entire life been just like broadcast as a lie. And I'm just... I, I am the kind of guy, right, where if you've put enough work into a crime and it's smart enough, I'm kind of like, like, congratulations. Like, that, that's that's worth the effort to do it. So if you spent years faking an entire history, I... I I think that's, um, it's a stupid thing to yeah, do, but I, I appreciate wild, the effort. Dude. It's wild. <laughs> it's like, what's your source? Wikipedia. And then it goes to him. It's like, I'm the yeah. source. Well, that's the thing. Everyone cited that book, but he cited his yeah. own book. And you actually see that a lot with everything. Like someone will say something, and then all the other news reports will quote that source. And then you'll see other people who quote that source. And so you've got what ends up with sort of mainstream media all quoting each other and nobody really knows where it came from but mm -hmm. it seems legitimate because you've got all of these sources quoting other legitimate sources uh it yeah. seems to be what happened here yeah he's like a hardcore grifter right so right over here this, this, this story comes to us from uh grums on x um zoom in a little bit there just to say nihon university has launched an investigation into the historian and nihon professor thomas lockley who has deleted his entire social media press yeah yeah, Nothing he... suspicious about that, is there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, no. Thomas Lockley appeared on Ubisoft's podcast for Assassin's Creed Shadows and was widely cited in edited, sorry, in edit revisions on Britannica and Wikipedia as the authority on the claim that Yasuke was a samurai. He was later accused of using an alt edit, sorry, alt to edit in the, Wikipedia to promote his own books and papers. Yeah, yeah it's insane, dude. It's pretty nutty that he would go. He went that far. I don't. I think he would have been fine. Nobody would have noticed had Ubisoft not make Yasuke a character. <laughs> mm -hmm. if they, Ubisoft just made a regular Japanese guy. This guy would never have been exposed. Which is funny. And, and I know Ubisoft even brought him on for a podcast of theirs just to validate the source. And apparently, it's proven to be fake. So it's gonna be funny what Ubisoft's gonna do moving forward. Yeah, that's insane. And the thing is that uh, he, here's another one over here. Assassin's Creed Shadow issues. Uh, Yasuke and discredited historian Thomas Lockley have exploded into a potential diplomatic incident. Letters are being sent with question to Japan Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and Technology Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ministry of Economy, Trade, and Industry. While the government have not taken action yet, they are waiting for final release of the game to decide, and there is mounting pressure in Japan to address the issue with Ubisoft portraying false information to Japanese children. And this is like the questions right over here that's been asked to them, right? It's been pointing out that Thomas Lockley uh, wrote a book about Yasuke's story, which he created from his own imagination and spread the contents of the books as historical fact all over the world. And that this is a movement to make a fabricated history, the truth of the world without many Japanese people even knowing about it. Uh, people uh, tell us government's opinion on this uh, future policy. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty crazy that government's getting involved, right? But, yeah, uh, I, yeah. I, I know some people will be like, oh, I don't want the government involved in it. So I, I'm fine with this, right? I, I think a country should fine. protect its history, should protect mm -hmm. its culture, um, especially when it's something like this, which is basically just a foreigner has come in and started destroying your history. Because we've seen this kind of stuff happen before, where um, even if people had known about this, once a movie comes out or like a major game, it does, Im like, that's what most people know, because they never knew the original stuff. And so the lie goes way further than the truth ever did. And so I, I do think that it's kind of 
damaging to do this, especially when in the future they'll get trotted out. It's like, see, I still see people now and they're like, oh, did you know England had a black king? It's like, no, that was Netflix. <laughs> Just because it was on Netflix doesn't mean it was real. Um, but that's how you'd end up with this. Uh, and once you, you know full about the way that all this goes, oh, well, there was one samurai like this. There was more. And then by the end, you, you, you like all of the samurai history has just been altered by one guy lying in a book. And yep. so I I, uh, I do appreciate them basically protecting their own culture and heritage. Yep. Yes. And this and we talked about this before, right? This 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 is not the first incident where a company has race swapped an actual historical figure, right? So right over mm -hmm. here is a Cleopatra incident that happened last year with Netflix. Yes. Right, they're being oh. sued for two billion dollars by Egyptian, uh, by the Egyptians for distorting the image of Cleopatra. So this is last year. So and under my videos for this, I had Egyptians going, "Oh, thank you for talking about this and really raising awareness," because that's the whole point. The, and this story, the the entire the, you can tell that sort of the low IQ involved. The entire reason for this is. Oh, Egypt is in the African continent. It's like, that, that is as much thought as they go into it. So it is absolutely absurd. Uh, I, I just find it really weird. And it's carry, it is a very sort of American-centric thing for, to do this specifically. Uh, it, it's so bizarre. Because you never see, like... They don't start putting Russians in people. It's like, oh, you know, let's put a Russian in Egypt. Like, that's never that. I say it's always replaced by what California looks like today. Yes. Uh, and so to try and... I, I don't really understand why you need feel the need to spread that through history. But Russell T. Davis said the same thing. And during the Bridgerton episodes and stuff, you're going back to like 1800s Bath, I think it was. And it looked like London today. Um, but he said, the re he said, I knowingly do this because i th i want to portray history how it should have been if it was better oh uh, wow yeah they mm -hmm. literally see it as an upgrade over what history was which is insane yeah i, I and we we've been getting a lot of uh like people from japan like commenting in our um our uh what's called uh, assassin's Creed shadow videos and they're saying why why are these companies doing this, right? And for mm -hmm. me, this is, this is my take. And I'm just like, well, the reason why is because these people feel that they're the fault of black slavery. They're the fault that is of something that happened 400 years ago is their fault. So they feel a uh, regret and they feel ashamed at the fact that they are white and they're the problem and they feel like they are the problem. So that, so what they're trying to do is uplift black people's voices in uh, and spread the, whatever message or propaganda or you know that the, the the dogma that they're trying to push onto other countries and if you disagree with it you are the racist one and uh mm -hmm. it's, they, they've been doing this for a little bit now and the thing is it's if you're claiming that this is um historical in any way and like if this is a game that's geared towards you know the teenagers or even like young kids because young kids will be playing this game whether or not you know they're supposed to they're going to be like, oh, this is what we saw. So, you know, black, you know, black characters. And, and, and I, I just feel like they don't respect the, his, the history at all. Oh, no, they hate history. Uh, you have to remember, you're dealing with people who um, see, well, progressive. Uh, they literally see history as a marching from basically a horrible place to a better place. And so the further you go on in time, the better it gets. It's constantly progressing to a better place. And so the further you go back in time, the more horrific it is. And so they literally do see it as an upgrade. They are fixing the mistakes of what was in the past by bringing it up to modern times. And they want people to learn the false history because then they think that it'll improve progress even more, it'll progress faster. And as to why people, I think it probably depends who you're talking about because there are a lot of people in Hollywood that are just going off self-interest. Um, mm -hmm. I've seen, it, it's a fun game actually, whenever anyone in Hollywood goes, this is a problem, we need to fix it, they are always the person that benefits. If it's like, oh, well, we need more acting roles for older women, it's an older woman saying it. If, oh, we need more directing roles for Filipino, it'll be a Filipino that wants a directing role. Um, I, I saw we need roles for younger women because they're now, you know, that they used to get all the roles, now they don't, and so now they're complaining, oh, look who's saying it. And so I think self-interest explains a lot of it. Um, you, you are right in that, like, 
it's guilt but I, I i've reached a point where i'm like I, I do wonder if it's a bit of like a kink for them like they they want to feel <laughs> like oh look at me uh, as i'm bowing down sacrificing myself to you it, it, it's just all a little bit too weird for me to not think you get some kind of enjoyment i think it's the entire ideology values weakness and vulnerability and like uh being a victim and so i think they are desperate to do anything to be the victim and one way you can be the victim is going i i was such a, i was such a pre i need to i need to bow down beneath you then i'll be the victim because i've raised you above me and now you can oppress me like i deserve it's literally everything and it's the worst ideology it, it literally destroys civilizations if you don't constantly improve constantly get better constantly try and work there's actually a bit in that manager kinto article where he calls himself and i'd never heard of this but apparently it's an american thing he, the model minority um yes that 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 is the thing so um that that was something that was started uh people started using it i believe either in the 50s or 60s when they started bringing in a bunch like more asians start coming in especially in san francisco right that's one of the ports where a lot of asians came in and my cousin who's extremely woke and who um who actually went to uc berkeley which is uh you know a, a extremely woke school here in california and he didn't he did an article about the model minority and basically it's like you have to not say anything you have to be very polite and you basically, you know, whatever is given to you. And it's like, oh, why can't you be like them? Why can't you just accept it and stuff like that? And it's um, it's sort of like it's the way it's being used now. It's sort of like it's people don't care about that anymore is because people are like, oh, uh, you know, just shut up and take our stuff. It's 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 definitely sad. And it's um, yeah, if you actually look up the model minority stuff, like even like they brought in a bunch of like the the. Um, uh, a, b a bunch of Asian people here to do the to construct the railroads, right? The railroad tracks, uh, like er, er, in, in the early '90s. It's just they're like, look at the amount of minority, and, and it's like it's it's and it's like no, they actually got paid, right? So like it's, it's just the whole thing is like, who's more oppressed? Is the oppression Olympics? Who's more oppressed? If, if a certain race is more oppressed, then let's uplift them. And yeah, I, I think it is sort of a kink. It's the, they they the fact that they are getting people who are online saying, yes, you did this for us. Right. And it's usually not the people who are like, you know, pe people who are oppressed aren't the ones who's usually saying it. And they are the ones who are like, you don't speak on our behalf. Like, why are you like, I'm doing this for you. I'm making this game for you. I'm making Yasuke a samurai for you. Please be happy. And if people do say that they're happy, they sort of, I don't know, they, 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 they climax for some reason. I, I, I don't know. It, it, it is a king. It feels like it at least. But yeah, what Manny said was about the model minority is he was referring to how when he got the role, he put a lot of work into it. And so he really focused on the training, on his body, on learning about Star Wars, because he never really interested in it before. And it, it, it seemed to be a derogatory term for somebody that actually takes pride in their work. And so he worked hard to do well in the role. And he kind of crapped on himself for that. It's like, oh, no modern minority. I mean, because he knows other people would have attacked him for actually caring about his job and wanting to do a good job. Because a load of other people I mean, look at the script. Didn't really put that much effort into it, whereas he did. Um, yeah. And that's, yeah, it's, it, it felt like he almost had to put himself down when he realized that he was putting in a lot of effort, which is a, a rather horrific thing. It, the interesting thing is about, if, I bet I guarantee, I don't know who, what the, who the Assassin's Creed people are, but I guarantee you there would be a significant amount of white women in that in that creative team and they will literally be like we are saving the japanese people we are we are <laughs> like they they literally found one guy and even if it was real like even if it turns out it's completely fabricated the one guy didn't exist but even if it was all true they still stepped over every single japanese person throughout history just to go to the one that they preferred uh yeah, yep. it is ridiculous and they um speaking of this this also applies to oh my god i i i, I couldn't finish it i watched the first episode and the last episode live action cowboy bebop right like get like you have people who are oh, actually inspired like the acolyte you know leslie headland's come out with that i didn't really yeah i think i think that's oh. what inspired the 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 smoke sith creature i think that's what oh. she was referring to oh yeah that that's actually pretty pr surprising is because when you mentioned the like a per, an actor that put in a lot of work to get to where they are. John Cho, he's, you know, he he's, he's getting up there in age, but he worked his ass off 
lost a lot of weight, got fit, started doing a bunch of martial arts, and then got his role. Uh, it grew his hair out to get the part of Spike Spiegel. And I think he 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 was I think he was pretty good at Spike Spiegel, but the thing is, it it took a lot of um, shitty people to ruin it, right? Like and and even you have uh, what's it called again? People who who worked really really hard to make it, uh, and he, like Jet Black was really good too. I, I'm just I'm not sure if you watched the the live action Cowboy Bebop. But, no, uh, I heard it was awful. I, 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 I only heard from it about from Lethal Lightning, and he absolutely despised that thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so right over here. Uh, oh, so, so this is the article right here. So, this brew brought up an article right over here from the yeah, uh, totally the website, inspired. The acolyte. Uh, the acolyte creator Leslie Helen says Disney Star Wars series was tonally inspired by Cowboy Bebop. Oh man, that's a. Uh... <laughs> Hopefully not the live action show because the live action show was garbage. It but just yeah. seems like such a random thing to bring up because she's done other articles where she was talking about what other inspired her and it was things like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon and that kind of stuff. She never mentioned Star Wars. That was my main issue. <laughs> Everything that inspired her, she never said Star Wars. Like, well, you know, the other movies, for instance, no. The the um, the books, no, no, nothing. No, Cowboy Bebop. That's the closest. That When you think of Cowboy Bebop, obviously you think, yeah, that was that's they were probably ripping off Star Wars when they made that. Yeah, but it gets worse. It's not not now that they have the video games, and then like if you say anything about it, you're a racist. And we do have a we do have a lot of people in in the comments such as who are actually defending it, right? But uh, they're getting a live Broadway show now. Yasuke, oh. uh, the new musical Yasuke, the Black Samurai, is getting. A, a choreographer, uh, yeah, to direct it. So, <laughs> is it going to be to rap music? Because that's what Assassin's Creed started playing. I, I have no mm -hmm. idea what that music they were trying to make was. Yeah, I, it's going to be a musical too. So, I, yeah, it could be to rap music. I, they're, they're probably going to take uh, what's it called again? Um, Hamilton with like they're going to use that as like a jumping off, right? Because like you know, Lin Manuel Miranda basically rap most of the time. So, I don't know. This is. This is crazy. Thinking you have so many people who are like, what the hell is going on now? You're making a Broadway musical about the black samurai. <laughs> yeah, I, I just don't know why if we're making something samurai, we can't just have Japanese people in it. That, yep. That's what I want. It, for yeah. instance, when um, Harry Potter was being filmed, uh, JK Rowling set a rule that British people had to be in it because it was a school set in Britain. So it makes sense. All the people fit together. It sets the scene of where this place is, and it's realistic and kind of draws you into the, the entire environment of it because everything fits together. When you start breaking it, because now you've got people from all over the world who don't fit in the area, even if you were like, oh, well, they would have actually been there in real life, it doesn't matter because you're trying to make everyone believe that this is set in, like, Korea or wherever the TV show would happen to be. And so you should have people from the local area that are recognizably from that area to set the scene. So that you don't have to explain it all. And every time you break that sort of um, vision, every detail that doesn't really fit in that scene pulls the audience out of it. Because you're noticing it, even like subconsciously. And so they, they actively ruin their own show by trying to do this. Uh, as you end up thinking about that rather than anything they're trying to tell. Yeah. Gray, how do you feel about this? Are you going to watch this? <laughs> yeah. This was written in yeah just two days ago, right? Uh, yeah, it was written yesterday. I, I, well, at I, least for here. I I think I get my impression is like whoever's running this would be show is like they're kind of stuck in between right now. It's like, oh shit, the historian who apparently wrote it is apparently a fraud. So at <laughs> yeah. the same time, they had they probably had to make this public already. So I get the feeling that there's a good chance maybe maybe it'll get cancelled or maybe they'll emphasize so heavily that this is a work of fiction it's it's one or the other in my opinion so uh yeah overall I, i'm still not interested of course it's like there, it's fabricating a lie and it's yeah it's like I, it makes me wonder will ubisoft do the same thing like will they backtrack on this is based on historical oh. events <laughs> what i wonder what they will do it's like I, I think they would probably just admit like this is a work of fiction and those, those the push through releasing the game because it, it's like it's way too late now for them to backtrack the entire game just to change the 
CGI, the appearance of the character. I think it'll, it'll, they'll burn way too much money for that. So, so they'll probably just say it's a work of fiction for this and for Assassin's Creed Shadows. Oh man, but yeah, it's it's uh it's it's gonna be Yasuke, the Black Samurai, is set in the 16th century feudal Japan. It recounts the journey of uh, Yasuke, an African man uprooted from his native land of Mozambique only to be brought to Japan where he is bestowed with respect in a society known for discipline and its moral codes. In Japan, he discovers the samurai culture where he, oh, sorry, where the way of living in life carries the utmost significance. So yeah, so I, I can't see, it's coming out in two years, looks like. <laughs> the, there's, an interesting, there's an interesting thing in their language that they do, right? Like the, the reason why they say that one terminology would be racist and the other one wouldn't. So you've got like person of color is supposed to be fine, but the other way around isn't, is because they say you're putting the person first. And so they actually care about language and they deem to have, that you must have the important thing before the unimportant thing. And from mm. their own language, it's like, well, he's black. That's the important thing. The samurai, that's that's neither here nor there. He's, just, he's a samurai. No, the important thing is his category. And I, if... If I had been in history and done something like a mate, like say it was all real, right? You'd you'd done something amazing in history. You like became a big thing for the culture, or whatever. I wouldn't want to be called the white samurai or the English samurai. <laughs> you'd just want to be called Yazuke, the samurai, or you'd want like Alfred the Great. You know, you want some kind of better name. The, it wasn't Alfred the White. Uh, you know, <laughs> like that that was important. <laughs> the, his great deeds were the thing that he was known for, being great. Uh, it, it just seems like such a stupid, pointless, unimportant thing to have as the main part of your title. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah, like... It's like, it's... what have you achieved? Well, you know, I was born this way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But I... I cannot wait for people to like because this I, this article is relatively recent, so I'm pretty sure a lot of the people don't know. But like, I'm not sure how what people thought about Hamilton. I, ne I never watched it. I believe you can actually watch it on like Disney Plus or something. I, I haven't seen it, but I'm not sure how many people would take that into like this is history, right? This is singing, but it's singing about history. So, uh, but yeah, like I, I, it could be like what Gray said. This is just like a it's fiction in in, in a way, but. You're talking about historical figures here, so I'm not sure how how the uh, Japanese people are going to feel about it. I don't think they... I think the intention is that you take it as real. We saw with the Netflix Cleopatra, right? In that, they didn't just change what she looked like. They changed the entire story. They had women in roles where women literally couldn't exist. Um, they were the ones that led everything. They, they took the actual leaders that made the decisions, and suddenly they were subservient to the characters. So they rewrote all of history. And I love that. Tra it's my favorite trailer. Well, it's one of my favorite trailers <laughs> where it's literally just the woman going, I don't care what the history books say. My grandma told me Cleopatra is black. <laughs> I'm like, you can't quote your grandma as a source. A historical source. Was she there? Was she like that old? Like climbing out the coffin decrepit just on the last legs. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that trailer, man. Yeah, yeah that, that was yeah. the best bit. So it was like, yeah, the moment she said it, everyone went wild. Thanks for checking out this segment of the Project Egg Row podcast. If you like what we do here, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and you will know next time when we go live. We do go live every Saturday at 8 p.m. Once again, we are just getting started. Tons of more video to come. Thanks, and we'll see you guys next time.